Number 9. Pratista Route After making it to the finals of the Miss England Beauty Pageant, the 28-year-old fashion model Pratista Route was awarded a vacation to Mauritius. The trip was in the Indian Ocean. The island nation is known for its mild tropical climate and for being home to some of the world's rarest plants and animals. During the last day of her trip earlier this year, Pratista was stung by a jellyfish. She was rushed to emergency care with an excruciating rash on her legs that she compared to the sensation of having boiling water poured on her skin. She was in too much pain to walk or sit. Shortly before Miss Rout was stung, local media had warned of the presence of highly venomous box jellyfish, which are widely considered to be one of the world's most venomous species. Pratista told the media that she initially thought she had brushed against some seaweed, but soon felt an unbearable stinging sensation. She realized just how serious her condition was after looking in the mirror and realizing how rapidly the rash was spreading. The model was kept in the hospital overnight, causing her to miss her flight back to the UK, but she was lucky to be alive and made a full recovery. Miss Rout won the trip, which was delayed by COVID-19, for raising £10,000, around $12,500 for charity in Miss England 2019. Number 8. Jordan Lindsay On the third day of a family trip to the Bahamas in 2019, 21-year-old Jordan Lindsay went snorkeling with her parents, two brothers, and girlfriend. They had decided on a whim to take the excursion to Rose Island, which is famous for its wild swimming pigs. At some point during the snorkeling adventure, Jordan screamed out of nowhere. Sharks were viciously attacking her. Her mother, Cammie, tried desperately to pull Jordan to safety as the creatures sank their teeth into her daughter's flesh. The sharks ripped off one of Jordan's arms and bit her all over her body including her legs, behind, and the arm they didn't rip off. By the time the young woman was removed from the water, she was fading in and out of consciousness. A boat that came to take Jordan to emergency care had no medical supplies handy, not even a first aid kit. In the meantime, family members used towels to slow the bleeding from Jordan's wounds, but it was too late to save her by the time she arrived at the hospital. In the tragedy's aftermath, her devastated loved ones campaigned for better medical training for tourism workers in the Bahamas. The company that hosted the snorkeling excursion extended its condolences to the grieving family and promised to improve its safety protocols. Should the company be required to have a medical expert on staff? Number 7. Carol Murrell Maylett A family vacation to Florida took a tragic turn earlier this year when a 74-year-old woman from Seattle named Carol Murrell Maylett began screaming for unknown reasons in the waters of Key West. She was snorkeling along a beach in Dry Tortugas National Park when her nearby relatives heard her cries for help. Officials said Maylett was not on a guided snorkeling trip when the incident occurred while she was swimming along the wall of Fort Jefferson on the beach. Fellow beachgoers brought Carol to shore and tried to perform CPR on her before she was airlifted to a medical center. Unfortunately, she died from her injuries. According to the last update, her cause of death remained undetermined as officials performed an autopsy and worked to figure out what happened. Authorities reassured the public that they didn't suspect foul play. Carol was the third tourist to die in one week while exploring the waters surrounding the Florida Keys. The investigation into her death is ongoing. In addition, two men aged 68 and 72 died in diving accidents at different locations off Isla Morada. Number 6. Burgert van der Westhuizen 74-year-old Burgert van der Westhuizen was an experienced open-water swimmer from South Africa who often swam in Jeffreys Bay along the country's southeastern shoreline. Despite his age, he competed in swimming challenges and could even swim 1.8 miles in under an hour. One day in 2013, van der Westhuizen was snorkeling in a popular surfing area in 2013 when a 12-foot-long shark attacked him and dragged him further out to sea. The creature, thought to be a great white, was initially scared off when a nearby beachgoer, Terry Oliver, kayaked to the scene and beat it with an oar. But the shark soon returned and continued to attack its victim. Oliver described seeing it bite Van der Westhuizen's torso before pulling him beneath the waves. The distance between the shark's dorsal fin and tail was so great that it was initially thought that two animals had attacked the swimmer. But investigators later concluded that just one shark was behind the fatal encounter. Then, a rescue service retrieved van der Westhuizen's mangled body from the water. His remains were damaged to the point where officials could only say that they believed the body parts belonged to an adult male. According to resident Brenton Williams, the swimmer's death marked the first recorded incident of a fatal shark attack in Jeffreys Bay, who spoke with the local media. He mentioned that van der Westhuizen's death was particularly unusual, given his level of swimming experience and his familiarity with the area. 
Number 5. David and Tina Watson In 2003, newlyweds David and Tina Watson celebrated their recent marriage with a honeymoon to Queensland, Australia. Unfortunately, things took a tragic turn during a scuba diving trip to the Yongala shipwreck, where 26-year-old Tina lost consciousness and sank 98 feet to the ocean floor. Only David knows what exactly happened after that. He claimed his wife was sinking too quickly for him to save her on his own, despite being a trained rescue diver. David later said that an ear problem prevented him from diving any deeper, at which point he resurfaced to seek help. Unfortunately, by the time rescuers removed Tina from the water, it was too late to save her. Nearby divers reported seeing the couple embracing in a so-called bear hug underwater, while Tina flailed helplessly as if she were trying to escape her husband's grasp. The witnesses reported that David eventually let go of his wife and resurfaced while she sank. A few weeks after Tina's death, another tourist got their vacation photos developed and noticed the young woman in the background of some of the pictures, lying face up on the sea bottom. David seemed unusually preoccupied with obtaining financial compensation in the tragedy's aftermath. When his travel insurance company refused to pay, he sued, but he ultimately dropped the lawsuit to avoid risking self-incrimination. In 2008, Australian authorities charged David with Tina's murder. He resisted extradition for six months before finally deciding to travel there and face the music in court. David was convicted of manslaughter and served just one year in an Australian prison. American authorities promised not to pursue the death penalty in exchange for David's return to the US, where he faced a murder charge concerning Tina's death. The case was dismissed based on a lack of evidence, but many remained convinced that David either murdered Tina or at least knowingly allowed her to die when he had an opportunity to save her. Number 4. Tragedy in Paradise Emergency responders were recently summoned to a beach on the Mexican island of Cozumel after someone spotted a lifeless older man floating in the water. Upon arriving at the scene, they saw no signs of a deceased person and assumed that the caller had been mistaken. Later that day, they received another call about human remains in the water. This time, they retrieved the body, which belonged to an American tourist. If both of the calls that the authorities received were regarding the same person, that means that his remains traveled roughly 10 miles in the water before being retrieved. The witnesses who found the man reported that his extremities had turned purple showing that he may have suffered a heart attack while snorkeling. A 68-year-old woman showed up at the hospital and said she thought he might be her husband, who had left the hotel room earlier that day and hadn't returned. The couple had been in Cozumel for just two days when the tragedy occurred. Details surrounding the man's death are scarce, and there's no reason to suspect that he was doing anything wrong. But it happened amid a spate of tourist deaths in the region, mostly resulting from beachgoers ignoring the displayed warning signals about where it's safe to swim. In addition, the weather had gotten dangerous in and around Cancun, prompting officials to display red flags many times. A red flag means that the currents and waves are considered dangerous and are intended to advise people against entering the water. But many ignored the warnings and soon found themselves in danger. At one point, lifeguards at one beach counted as many as 10 people struggling in the water at once. The government has increased the lifeguard presence at local beaches to counter the ongoing problem. But the authorities also hope that more visitors will take red flag warnings more seriously and wait to go into the water until it's been deemed safe to swim. By doing so, tourists can help ease the burden on rescue workers who have found themselves overwhelmed with the number of distressed swimmers they've had to help recently. Number 3. Yves Berthelot In 2015, 50-year-old Yves Berthelot and his wife Anne took a vacation to New Caledonia, a French-owned island in the South Pacific that's famous for its tropical climate and diverse wildlife. The couple and five others rented a catamaran during the trip and went on a snorkeling excursion that sadly ended in tragedy. Yves was just feet away from the group's boat when an 11 and a half foot long shark suddenly attacked him. It bit the man's arm, groin and leg, leaving him with fatal injuries. His fellow group members, who were primarily medical professionals, tried their best to save him, but their efforts were unfortunately in vain. The group had noticed a shadow in the water shortly before the attack but apparently didn't have enough time to warn Yves to get out of the water, or perhaps didn't realize that his life was at risk. Local experts identified the animal that attacked him as a bull shark, which is widely considered to be responsible for more attacks on humans than any other species. Number 2. Nancy Peacock One day in 2016, Nancy Peacock and her husband, Guy Cooper, went snorkeling in Pahoiki Bay off Hawaii's Big Island. Nancy was an experienced snorkeler and was eager to use her new full-face mask. 
but something went terribly wrong. Less than an hour after entering the water, Nancy was found floating face up with the waterlogged mast pulled out of its proper position, suggesting that something had gone suddenly wrong. Autopsy findings were partially consistent with a drowning death, but the coroner also concluded that Nancy had clogged arteries and that the condition may have contributed to her death. But she had no history of heart disease, according to Guy Cooper, who spent years searching for answers regarding his wife's death. He wrote in a Honolulu Civil Beat article that even Nancy's doctor found the conclusion not believable. Cooper also pointed out that the coroner knew little about the circumstances of his wife's death, including details about her snorkeling experience, the equipment she was using, or her medical history. Nancy is one of the many who have died while snorkeling in Hawaiian waters which see 13 times more human deaths than anywhere else in the US. For Cooper, this troubling statistic begs the question of whether officials are overlooking important details or jump into conclusions about the causes of people's deaths, which often happen seemingly out of nowhere in calm waters. In his quest for answers, he found disturbing evidence that Nancy's mask may have been unsafe, leading him to wonder if faulty masks could explain some of the other snorkeling tragedies that have happened in the region. So he posted a review on Amazon warning customers he believed the mask was dangerous, but it was quickly removed. Other reviewers claimed the mask was prone to leaks and difficult to breathe with. Local snorkel rental owner Robert Winter told the Honolulu Civil Beat that the company that makes the mask marketed it aggressively to his employees. When they finally tried it out, they found it to be nowhere near the quality that they considered safe. While Cooper may have uncovered some telling information, the circumstances of Nancy's death remain murky. He has since turned his energy towards raising awareness about the potential dangers of full-face snorkeling masks and the importance of knowing one's own experience level, fitness, and abilities in the water. Hopefully his efforts will pay off. Number 1. Peter O'Halloran While snorkeling off Australia's Northwest Cape in the town of Exmouth in 2019, a man named Peter O'Halloran suddenly felt something bite his arm. The 57-year-old, who was roughly 1,300 feet from the shore when the shark attack occurred, could tell that the creature had taken what he described as a pretty good bite. O'Halloran swam to shore despite his injury and drove himself to the hospital. Unfortunately, the facility wasn't equipped for the level of treatment he needed, so he boarded a domestic flight to Perth to undergo surgery. After landing in Perth, he showed reporters his x-rays and said that the shark had torn right through the meat and the doctors had told him that there was a lot of bone missing. He was left with a 4-inch scar on his elbow. O'Halloran never caught a clear enough glimpse of the creature that attacked him. It was a shark, but the species was never identified. But O'Halloran told reporters shortly after his surgery that he was eager to get back into the water and swim again. Thanks for watching. Would you rather go on a snorkeling excursion hosted by a company with a bad reputation or take a vacation to a tropical paradise only to be quarantined in your hotel room the entire time? Let me know in the comments below. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel for more fantastic videos.